Hello and welcome to the Authority of Love. I'm here with co-host again, David Walls from the uh, Family Foundation, and it is another fabulous Family Foundation Friday because we got a lot to cover. David, welcome, and I look forward to this. Greg, good to be with you. You know, you mentioned something to me. Um, we have a mutual friend that we both uh, respect quite a bit, and that's Pastor Donovan Stewart in the Mission Church. And I know you've had some connections with him lately that I think would be good to give a shout out to him. Yeah, no, appreciate Greg you uh, introducing me to him, and what a, what a uh, just a fabulous church uh, loves the Lord on fire for the Lord. And yeah. uh, I was uh, thankful to get to speak there this past Sunday uh, for a few minutes in both services, share a little bit about our ministry, share a legislative update. Yeah. Uh, you know, Pastor um, uh, Pastor Donovan actually joined us uh, up at the Capitol last week as a part of our church ambassador network yeah. to, that we're doing to minister and pray with legislators. So thankful for that ministry and for him joining us. And, um, you know, it, it reminded me, I, I joked, uh, it's not really a joke, it's the truth. It's <laughs> yeah. kind of been my, my second church home here in Lexington. My son and I are part of the Trail Life Troop that got uh, started there at the Mission Church uh, uh, about a year ago. Right. So just so thankful to the Lord for, for the Mission Church and just so many other churches that, that partner yeah. uh, partner with our ministries yeah. and are seeking to, to proclaim the gospel and honor him by encouraging their folks to stay engaged yeah. uh, Donovan, with what's going on. Donovan yeah. gets it when yeah. the Word says, help prepare your your flock for, yeah. equip them for yeah. the ministry, and to, to be salt and light, Absolutely. which is what we're called to be. And that Absolutely. doesn't mean just within the walls or right. just a little network that we're in. Yeah. It's everywhere. Government, media, education, we're called to be that. And yeah. I know that's what Family Foundation yeah. stands for. So that's, that's exactly great. what I said. Yeah, yeah, really? That's really? what okay. I started There's off. There's the Holy Spirit. Oh, that's I right. said okay. one yeah. of the biggest lies that Satan wants us to believe is that we're supposed to keep our faith within the walls of this church. But yeah. but God is Lord over every area. And, 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 yeah. and, and uh, listeners, <laughs> believe me, we did not talk about uh, that. We That's got to be the Holy Spirit. Uh, I love that. I love that. Uh, well, let's jump in then because yeah. there's a lot going on with the General Assembly. We're wrapping up week eight today. Um, and so we're a little over halfway through and it's heating up. There's it a is. lot of things going yeah. on. So there's several bills I know you want to discuss. So uh, let's start with, you You mentioned RIFRA, which is Religious Freedom Restoration yeah. Act, right? There's a bill by... Um, Representative Steve Rawlings. Yeah. What's going on with that? Yeah. So uh, a very important religious liberty bill, uh, and that's House Bill 47, and that would update Kentucky's existing RIFRA, right. okay. Religious Freedom right. Restoration Act. And uh, these are very important religious uh, liberty bills. Uh, there was one passed at the federal level many years ago, right. actually, when, yes. when religious freedom used to be a, a completely bipartisan issue. Right. Uh, right. And uh, President Clinton signed that into law. Yes, in the and since yeah, that right. time, there's been, you know, I think 25, at least 25 states that have uh, state versions of yeah. uh, religious freedom restoration acts. But Kentucky's is really in need of strengthening and clarifying in some key aspects. There's been some some cases where religious liberty has been infringed of, of Kentuckians and they haven't had a remedy mm -hmm. to that. And then also uh, what this, this bill would do would clarify and really define that, that when it says government can't infringe upon uh, religious liberty, that means government at all levels. So right. if we're talking about local right. government, you know, uh, administrative regulations in a variety of ways. So it really just clarifies uh, but very, very important and really excited that that bill had a hearing this week in the House Judiciary Committee and actually passed out of that committee Good. overwhelmingly um, um, this week. And so I'm, uh, I'm just so thankful for Representative Rawlings and his faithful leadership on that issue. Yeah. Greg, he, he carried that bill last session. It passed out of that same committee last year at the very end of the session. Uh, didn't really have an opportunity to move forward. Now there's... Time, time, yes. time yes. for it to move forward. Yeah. And we're encouraging everyone to uh, to visit our website at KentuckyFamily.org, go to our Take Action page, and send an encouraging note to encourage your legislators to stand for religious freedom. We have a real opportunity to get yeah. this done this session. And, and, and not only th their legislators, their district, but but copy that to leaders. Absolutely. Copy that to leaders. You can do that on the on there at KentuckyFamily.org, yeah. Take Action. Or you can call the legislative hotline and do the same thing. Absolutely. Both of us, we would love for you to go to the website, of course. But if you want to do it on the phone, that's 800-372-7181. Uh, and just express that you, we want our religious freedoms intact and strengthened. Yeah. That's what we're talking about there. Yeah. Now, I know there's one that, that, that uh, Michael Johnson 
good friend of ours. I worked with him for a while. Yeah. He's your 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 policy director here yeah. at Family Foundation. He had an article on the one, uh, I believe it's 442, yeah. Representative James Tipton. And what did yeah. that deal with? Yeah, so so thankful for Kentucky today. Got to give them a little plug. That yeah. is the yes. news arm of the Kentucky Baptist Convention. But they do a great job of covering state issues. Mm-hmm. And you know, a lot of times they'll uh, they'll run editorials, and and they've got reporters uh, that do a great job of covering things happening at the state level. So thankful for them. Yeah. And uh, they ran an editorial that Michael wrote, highlighting a really important issue that really just came to our attention, Greg, uh, leading up to the session. And a lot of that is is thanks to John Razor on our team, mm-hmm. who is also a pastor. Yes. And it was has been involved in sports ministry, and and he started being reached out to. The genesis of this was. He was being reached out to with some uncertainty about how some of the ch- uh, changes, recent changes on sales tax uh, impacted uh, churches that have sports ministry about whether they should be having to charge sales tax on those things. And so we did a little further due diligence, talk with some legislators, and really what, what uh, became clear was uh, because of some pre-existing law and then with some of the tax changes that just happened, uh, Unfortunately, as we sit here right now, uh, churches and other nonprofit and other ministries really uh, are required to be collecting sales tax to register with the state mm-hmm. and to be collecting sales tax, not just on sports programs and other right, ministries, right. but depending on how they uh, how do they handle it, potentially even on things like charging for Wednesday night dinners, mm-hmm. charging for resources that are being sold uh, yeah. at the church for Bible studies, yeah. which you know, might impact. I know you've got a great book that's used as a resource. Well, I was just sitting here thinking, yeah. this, I have to file a report right. every every quarter yeah. that says that, because most of mine are sold online, yeah. but that says that uh, you have to show how it was collected and that Amazon, because mine's yeah. on Amazon. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I hate to admit that, but it is. But, <laughs> anyway, but everything's on Amazon. Right, exactly. <laughs> but uh, I have to report that yeah. and say that, that they are... Uh, filing and sending in the taxes on that. So yeah. it'd be great if we didn't have to do that. Right. As a nonprofit. And so but, look, we, we've had, and, and this is what Michael does a great job of laying out in this editorial at, at Kentucky Today is, look, we've long understood that, that recognizing that churches should be tax exempt because of the benefit that they offer to yeah, yeah. <laughs> society in so, so many, many different, right. so many ways. Right. And so, and, and I think a lot of this is just some, you know, some uh, unintended consequences and some things being brought to light. Yeah. But um, so thankfully, House Bill uh, uh, 442 by Representative James Tipton has been filed to clarify that uh, that we don't want churches and other ministries to have to become tax collectors. <laughs> Little IRSs, uh, right? And, and, you know, and I'm so thankful for so many pastors that have... Uh, they're speaking out on this, and, and, yeah. and Michael yeah. interviewed, talked with, I know our, our good friend, uh, Pastor Josh Schmidt up in Burlington Baptist, and others, they had um, shared a little insight that was in this editorial talking about, look, they're, they're sports ministries, a lot of times upward. These are not revenue no, uh, no, programs. No, these, are, these are ministries, yeah. Yeah, and a lot out. of times yeah. the church is already subsidizing the cost. Yes. So yes. if they're having to collect tax, that's not necessarily going to be passed along. That's just going to further eat at uh, the dollars yeah. that the church is using to try to do ministry. Yeah. Well, and um, I know you said this, David. Yeah. I can't help but think. I, I don't see it, but I can't help but think because I know they've been trying for years to, to remove the tax-exempt status from churches. Yeah. And I don't know that this connects or not, but yeah. we know that that's an underlying thing that they've yeah. been trying to do. Right. And so it would be good to do the due diligence and make sure we're covered on all these yeah, things. Yeah, and, and that's part of our point. Look, we think the principle that, you know, that's well-established, that, uh, you know, that churches are, are tax-exempt on their property taxes, they should uh, apply uh, and similarly on on, uh, on sales tax yeah, as well. Exactly. And so that's what that bill would do. But, look, it's really important uh, this is an issue that a lot of folks are just kind of finding out about yes. and, and getting yeah. up to speed on. So I encourage folks to to um, to engage with us at KentuckyFamily.org to read the editorial and learn more about the issue. But more right. than that, uh, particularly if, if your church uh, may have a, one, a sports ministry, uh, reach out to your pastor. Make sure they're aware. We're so thankful for so many that have been reaching out to legislators uh, the bill has been jumping in the amount of co-sponsors yeah, yeah. in the last few days. That means they're so hearing I'm, some things. I'm yeah. optimistic that this is going to be an issue that can be addressed this session. That's excellent. Yeah. That's excellent. And you mentioned a second article that Kentucky today. Yeah. yeah. Right. Toot your no, horn, Dave. To, no, <laughs> no. Again, no, I'm so it thankful is good. It was good. that we have a platform 
that's willing exactly to right. share Christian perspectives on right. issues because, as, as we know, many times the, church the mainstream media is not as uh, willing sometimes to, right. to share right. some of these perspectives. So, so thankful for At Kentucky today. At least with objectivity. Today. That's right. <laughs> so uh, I wrote a, a, an editorial that's also just been published on Kentucky Today talking about the need for stronger parental rights protections. Yeah. And you and I have yeah. talked about this. Uh, a lot of this circles around House Bill 304. Uh, that Representative Shane Baker filed. But what I do in that piece is I remind um, the readers that, look, the General Assembly took courageous stand to protect parental rights last session. And, and a lot of that had to do with protecting parental rights in our schools. But what we've seen since then is our two uh, major school districts, Fayette County here, Jefferson County, probably others, are essentially just thumbing their nose at, at, at the law. Yeah. Yeah. And so, and then there's been some other instances. You and I have visited about some of the, the situation that happened in Anderson right. County, right. some other ways in which we've seen, unfortunately, um, parents not being given the information or things happening yeah. behind parents' backs yeah. in, our, in, our, in our schools. And so this is really just a call to say, look, the General Assembly acted courageously last session it's time for them to courageously again. act again yeah. so that uh, the parental rights protections that we have in law are not just paper. Yeah. They're not just empty words. Filling in some of those gaps. The gaps. Where these school right. districts have been abusing. Right. right. And to, then to ensure that if, 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 uh, you know, if a right of a parent is being violated, that the parent or the family has an opportunity to have that enforced yes and absolutely. so so the enforcement me mechanism is is really really important yeah. and so again thankful for kentucky today publishing that piece and and again folks can go to our website and learn more about all of these bills at kentuckyfamily.org but we really are uh, if we're not already we're in crunch time yes yeah. we're, we're coming <laughs> down the stretch uh, we're yeah. coming down the stretch yeah. and um what what a opportune time to um to take a moment and be salt and light that you've been called to be by just simply uh, reaching out to your house and Senate members. Exactly, and standing on that truth. And yeah. that's what we, we hope you'll, you'll see and do. Uh, again, KentuckyFamily.org. Go to the Take Action yeah. tab, and you can see these and many others. Yeah. And then read through them and share it with others. Share it with others so they might jump in and, and join us as well. Uh, I know you mentioned last week that part of this also was the citizen was in such high demand, yeah. your, your, your uh, printed version. Yeah. Um, how, how'd that turn out? You got some more printage? Still we, got we've got a few more bundles here left okay. at the office. I know we got some folks coming to pick up some more tomorrow. So uh, we're um, really thankful for, I mean, I think well over 100,000 copies that have been distributed. And so, uh, you know, this is um, uh, when folks um, share their citizen. You know, sometimes we have folks, you know, what difference does it make? Look, as we said, a lot of the information that you and I are talking about here, mm -hmm. Are you hearing this on your nightly news, Greg? Yeah, no. I mean, no. our our and that's our, by design, David. We know right. that. I right. mean, th right. these are important issues. We're talking about religious freedom, our first freedom. Yes. We're talking about you know a, a, a tax issue that could impact ch every church Ch in Kentucky. Yeah. Parental, Parental rights. Parental rights. Yeah. yeah. Uh, again, not tooting our own horn. We're just saying this is important information. And so when you engage sharing a citizen, sharing this podcast, you know, investing, engaging in our ministries, you're helping equip the body of Christ here in Kentucky. Yeah. So. so go to the KentuckyFamily.org, take action, other things there. The legislative hot sign, hotline is 800-372-7181. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for your prayers. Thanks always to the Lord. Make it a great day and God bless in the love and worship of Christ. Stay tuned at 1245 for my good friend Greg Horn and Hope is here. I'm Greg Williams with co-host David Walls and you're listening to The Authority of Love.